Welcome to Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee, a weekly program exploring important trends in health. America's obsessive quest to defy aging has spawned countless products designed to help you look and feel younger. But if you're thinking about purchasing one of those products, a commonly advertised substance called HGH, short for human growth hormone, you better think twice. Not only are you likely to be disappointed, you may be putting your health at risk. The HGH fad is a typical story of naive consumers and shady marketers. But what makes it stand out is the way that that fad grew. All it took was one highly misinterpreted 1990 article in a reputable medical journal to launch a multi-million dollar industry still thriving on unproven claims. HGH is a large complex protein molecule. It's made up of 191 amino acid building blocks. It's produced in the pituitary gland, a peanut-sized organ in the base of the brain. Scientists first began to focus on the growth hormone in the early 1940s as they struggled to understand and help a group of children of abnormally short stature who were unable to grow. They learned that injecting the children with ground-up pituitary glands harvested from cadavers could stimulate new growth in the children. But what they could not have imagined at the time was that some of the children of the 40s, growing up as the leading edge of the boomer generations, would latch on to HGH for a very different purpose that is both illegal and harmful. This small segment of aging citizens in search of a fountain of youth is now supporting the underground sale of some two billion worth of HGH related products a year in the United States in the hopes that these products will help maintain youthfulness and promote longevity. The global market is estimated at 64 billion a year and it includes the exercise and fitness industries, designer beverages and foods, vitamins and supplements, cosmetics and cosmeceuticals, and plastic and cosmetic surgery. This is how it all started. When therapy with HGH first began with children some 60 years ago, the effort was hampered by supply. There were not enough cadaver donors of pituitary glands to meet the demand. This situation continued until 1985, when Genetech was able to successfully bioengineer the molecule eliminating lack of supply as a barrier. The field was continuing to advance when in 1990, the New England Journal of Medicine quite innocently reported on a study of 21 men, aged 61 to 81, with low levels of a chemical precursor of human growth hormone, who were therefore viewed to be deficient in HGH. Twelve of the men received injections of HGH and nine went untreated as controls for a six-month period. At the end of the six months, a variety of tests were performed revealing that those receiving the injections had a 14% decrease in fatty tissue, a 9% increase in lean body mass, and a 1.6% increase in bone density. Now there were problems with the study. The small numbers, the short period of observation with limited opportunity to observe side effects, and the absence of a double-blind design, which would have given injections to all, some with and some without HGH. And those objections were clearly noted in an editorial that accompanied the original article, as it appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine with the caution, quotes, because there are so many unanswered questions about the use of growth hormone in the elderly and in adults with growth hormone deficiency, its general use now or in the immediate future is not justified, close quotes. But apparently, a wide range of traditional and new media health marketers were not closely following these expert words of caution. Their author, Dr. Mary Lee Vance, wrote 13 years later, that that single article, quotes, incited a proliferation of anti-aging clinics and lay publications extolling the benefits of growth hormone in reversing or preventing aging, close quotes. So what do we know today about HGH? Well, first, that as part of normal aging, HGH begins to decline at about age 40 in humans. Numerous studies since 1990 have confirmed that if you give HGH to older individuals, 
They do achieve modest increases in muscle mass and bone density, as well as decreases in body fat. But studies also confirm that the drug does not increase muscle strength, functionality, or cellular metabolism. What's more important is that one quarter to one half of those on the injection develop diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, symptoms of arthritis, tissue edema, or carpal tunnel syndrome as a complication. There is also considerable question as well whether inciting cellular growth at a time when it's going to naturally slow down may inadvertently increase the risks of cancer like breast and prostate cancer. And then there are the animal studies, which show that lifespan goes up and tumor incidence goes down with drops in growth hormone. To understand how things got out of hand, let's discuss what happened after that 1990 article was published and take a look at the steps later taken to try to address the damage. After the article, a new unofficial specialty in medicine emerged called longevity medicine, which today claims some 2,500 uncertified specialists. Next, a new nonprofit organization called the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, or A4M, sprang to life as the quotes sole medical society dedicated to the advancement of therapeutics related to the science of longevity medicines, close quotes. Now, this group currently boasts 12,000 members and receives 1.8 million hits on their website each and every month. Next, internet sales kicked into high gear, selling not only real and fake intravenous HGH, but also a wide range of oral formulations. Strange indeed, since the normal digestive acids destroy HGH before it can be absorbed. There are now an estimated 100,000 illegal U.S. Internet purchases per year and well over 200,000 prescriptions written for HGH in the United States, with 30% or more written for non-approved purposes, such as combating aging or enhancing athletic performance. Since HGH was formally approved by the FDA in 1940, and since it is effective only in bioavailable intravenous form, it's illegal to prescribe it except for two purposes. Number one, biochemically confirmed true HGH deficiency. And number two, wasting syndrome associated with AIDS. In fact, those who provide it otherwise risk five years in prison and up to a half a million dollar fine. But with boomers on the roll, it's hard to get the cat back into the bag. The New England Journal of Medicine originator of the 1990 article is especially galled because marketers of the illegal and fraudulent HGH have hotlinked to the 1990 article as scientific justification. Current editor Dr. Jeffrey Drazen stated recently that the quotes 1990 article by Rudman et al receives as many hits in a week as the other 1990 articles do in a year if people are induced to buy a human growth hormone releaser on the basis of research published in the journal, they're being misled, close quotes. The National Institute of Aging, the U.S. Senate Special Committee on Aging, the GAO, Scientific America, and the AARP have all raised the alarm as well. So if you're a boomer or related to one, Take heed of these wise words from Mayo Clinic's J. 